Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the webinar for the new user interface. Uh, my name is Claire Hordle, and I'm going to be leading this webinar for the duration. We expect it to last about 15 to 20 minutes. Please do ask questions as we go through, and we will answer any questions that you have at the end. Today, we're going to be looking at the new themes concept in workbooks. We're also going to be getting an, a really good feel for the modern theme and the new UI. I'm going to be taking you into it and showing you around. We're also going to be looking at how you can set user-specific preferences and having global themes across the whole of your database. We will look at zooming and resizing of layouts. And then we will also be covering off uh, a brand new feature, which is data enrichment of sales leads, organizations, and people. So this is a long-awaited user interface, and we are doing a controlled release at the moment. We have around 25 customers currently using the interface, and we're really looking forward to getting everybody up and running on it. OK, so let's take a look in the database. So this is it. This is our new user interface. As you will see, it looks and feels quite similar to the old interface, apart from the fact that we have um, more color coding here now. We have new icons. The icons have been built so that we have the ability to be able to have workbooks on tablets and to be utilizing the tablet theme. The user icons are actually a lot larger now, so they are built for finger touch technology. They are also square as opposed to round. And we have a new color coding. So here you can see where my, where my cursor is, that we've got a person, and they've got a nice blue background. And then we've also got an organization with a black background. Our dashboards are now a lovely purple with a dial, and um, our marketing campaigns are a lovely shade of orange. So these are all built in the same way. You can still put shortcuts onto your desktop in the same way that you've always done. Um, they've just changed in the style and in the definition. So let's look at how you can set this theme up. On a global basis as a system administrator, you'll set the, scene, the theme up in configuration. You'll go to customization and desktop preferences. And here you can actually set up the look and feel. So as you can see, the theme is modern. And you can also revert back to classic as well. But we'll keep it as modern. You can also move your taskbar position. So your taskbar position on a global basis could be at the top or on the left or at the bottom. And you can also have your shortcut layouts to be vertically or horizontally across the page. You can also then give your users the ability to change their look and feel. So if you click here, they will be able to change the look and feel of the entire database. And that will only be for their own user login. We can also display custom wallpapers. And we have many wallpaper themes that are available within the system. You can then give your users the ability to be able to change their wallpaper as well. You can put in a company logo and have optional text displayed. OK, so that's how you would change it on a global basis. Users, however, can set their own preferences. So you would do that by going to Start, Preferences. And then your users can change their look and feel. So they can move their taskbar. At the moment, it's at the bottom, but I'm going to move it to the left-hand side. You can also collapse buttons. So if you look down the bottom here, we do have collapsible buttons. So you can have several dashboards open, for example, and they will be listed as opposed to being spread across the taskbar. You can untick this if you prefer not to have it. And then also you can display a custom wallpaper. And I'm actually going to change this to another one. 
I particularly like the sunrise at Brighton Pier. And then I'm going to save and close that. So this will reload. And as you can see, it brings up the taskbar on the left hand side. And this time we've taken away the collapsible buttons and we now have everything listed down the left hand side of the page. But the taskbar functionality is literally the same as it used to be. You've still got the ability to close all windows. You've still got the ability to just show only the current window and also look for your recent items. The other thing that's slightly changed is our search. So as we've mentioned, we have um, given you the ability to use data enrichment. So this allows you to be able to search for organizations and people based on their, their domain or their email address. So if we were to look for an organization such as Harrods, for example, we just put in their URL and we'd hit return. What happens then is that it will go out and search within everything within the database, but actually in this case, it hasn't found Harrods in the, in the, in the system. And what we need to do is click on the link in order to create Harrods as an organization. So we can do that. What this has done is it's actually gone out to the internet and pulled back information on Harrods. So it's got their main address. It's also got their Facebook profile, a LinkedIn profile if they have one, and a Twitter profile. It's also got bought through a logo picture off of their website. And we can also build up an organization biography if there's one as well. This will also work with existing companies in the system and also existing people. Now, if I look for myself with my email address, done that wrong. It helps if you put in the right email address for yourself. Then it will bring up the fact that it's not found me in the system at all, but it will create a new person record for me. So I open up the person record. It displays a photo off of my social media. It also displays all the information it can find on me, including Facebook profiles, LinkedIn, Twitter, and then if there's a person biography, it will also show that. Again, this will work on existing data in the system. So if we were to look up John Cheney, for example, we can see here that John's already been enriched. He's got all of his information in here, his Facebook profile, etc. And there's also been a person biography. However, if we were to actually take this out, and just save that, I'll save and close. I'll take out a bit more information, I think. So with all the best plans of mice and men, what normally happens is that we have an enrich button that pops up. So the enrich button pops up on the user, um, sorry, on the main page, you can click on that. And then it will give you all of the information that you need in order to be able to populate the data onto the page. All right, so we have all of the information here and we can actually apply that to the existing record.
And this will work across all of our sales leads, people and organisations. So if we looked up workbooks as an organisation, we can see that the enrich button will be there as well. And we can put in all information on workbooks onto our main page. So where we see this useful is um, for you to be able to start profiling prospects and customers within your database and also to be able to enrich the data quite easily within that. Now we do allow you now to be able to resize your screens and zoom in and zoom out. So using the browser you can zoom out and the page will adjust itself dependent on where you work. So I prefer to work at about 75% of my screen resolution and um, most people seem to be quite happy with that. Um, however, if you wanted to work at 100% you could and of course that would allow you to be able to have larger uh, population on your screen of icons. This will also then work for things like dashboards as well. So if we just open up one of our dashboards, you will be able to utilize the zoom on your dashboards as well. And it just helps you utilize the real estate on your screens. If I just open up one of the other screens just to show you, you can also then resize any of your screen or you can maximize and minimize as you would have done previously. Okay. So I'm just going to go back to preferences and collapse my buttons again just to show you that it can be collapsed back down. And here you can see the dashboards where we've got four open now has been collapsed back down. Okay, so that is our new user interface. As you can see, the functionality behind the scenes is exactly the same as it's always been, guys. There's been no change in that. The actual architecture of the database has been changed, um, but it doesn't actually change the way that you would use this system. It's really based on the look and the feel, and I really hope you enjoy using it. I'd like to open the questions now. So I'm just looking at my colleague across the room. So the size of the icons is amended by the actual resizing of, uh, sorry, we've had a question, can the size of the icons and font be amended? So actually what you can do is, you can now rename your icons. So if we wanted this to say London IT organizations, we can do. The actual size of the icons is dependent on the zoom of your screen. So you can actually change that by zooming out or zooming in. But what you wouldn't be able to do is actually change the font at the moment. If that's a requirement, please do put it as an idea on our, on our website or speak to your customer account manager and we will look at getting that change for you. So another question here that we've had is, can we bulk enrich existing records? Unfortunately, not at the moment. It is one by one. Um, however, if you're using Web Insights, then any organizations that you utilize with Web Insights also has a certain amount of enrichment on it. 
and this is done in a bulk fashion. So what we're trying to do is offer you the ability to have multiple ways of profiling your organizations that you're working with. But essentially, if you are um, looking to bulk enrich existing records, please do talk to us and we will see if we can put that onto the roadmap for you. Another question here, are the graphics on the dashboard going to be updated? Absolutely. So as you are probably aware, we've spent the last year looking at the overall architecture of workbooks. The next thing on our list of uh, roadmap items is to actually fully update all of our reporting and graphical displays. We're looking at starting this work in Q1 next year and hope to have something for you by Q2 next year. So 2018, we will be totally refreshing our reports and our dashboard displays. Is there an additional cost for the data enrichment functionality? We haven't given it a cost at the moment. I think at the moment, what we're trying to do is to trial it within our customer base. Um, and we will make a decision on that later on, but certainly at the moment it's included within your license. The unfortunate thing about data enrichment functionality is that it's not an exact science, especially where people are concerned, simply because a lot of people will use their personal email address and not their professional email address um, in order to sign up for things like social media, etc. So we're looking at ways that we can help to profile that information, um, utilizing maybe multiple email addresses or something like that. So there's still work going on with data enrichment to make it better for you. So the new UI is be, when is the, sorry, I'm just reading your writing. When are you rolling out the new UI globally? So the new UI is being rolled out globally as we speak. Because we're doing a controlled release, we are rolling it out to customers on a case-by-case -case basis. We're currently awaiting feedback from our, from our first 25 customers who are using the new, the new UI. We'll be ironing out all of the bugs and everything that they give us, and then we will be rolling it out as a, um, as a release to everybody else. So we're probably looking at the end of this month in real terms in order to get it out to everybody. Is there a list of field names that can get enriched? Absolutely, um, we can provide you with that. Um, Catherine will take down your details and we will publish a list of field names that will get data enriched. But essentially, it's the same for um, organizations as it is for people. So if I just bring up John Cheney's record again, I can show you the fields. So we have the photo field, which is a brand new feature. We've never had photo fields before on our main page layout. Also, the social media profiles, so Facebook profile, LinkedIn profile, Twitter profile, person biography, the street address, town, county, postcode, etc., telephone, mobile, and, I, and also the employer. So they're the main fields that will be enriched through the data enrichment process. Okay, can you reorganize shortcuts? So there's still not the ability to be able to drag and drop shortcuts, but you can reorganize them based on your preferences by having them horizontally or vertically across the screen. So if I just change that to horizontal and reload that, I can show you exactly how that will look. Close down those windows. So you can reorganize them in this fashion, but typically it will be that the shortcuts will come onto your screen as you've created them. 
Again, that could be a really great enhancement request. So if it's not already on our ideas forum, please do put it on there. Does data enrichment comply with GDPR and right to be forgotten? Yes, it does. So we use um, a data amalgamator called Full Contact to be able to actually pull our data enrichment data into the system. And it's only data that's already in the public domain. So it will fully comply with GDPR and the right to be forgotten. Can you type your search without opening a new window? Yes. So within search, if you actually click on your start menu, then you can just begin to type straight away. So if I was to look for Atlantic, for example, I can just hit go and off it will go. So you don't actually have to open a search window in order to be able to search. Is there a change in reporting? There's not a change in reporting. The functionality is still the same. However, as I've previously mentioned, we will be um, refreshing our reporting and our dashboard digital uh, interface next year. What happens if data enrichment pulls in dirty or wrong data? Um, you can absolutely make a decision whether to keep the data or get rid of it. Typically, if it's an existing record, so if I open up Atlantic Computer Services, if we click on the Enrich button and there's something in there that we don't want to have, we can then click on keeping the current and apply the current as opposed to applying the new data. So on existing records, that's absolutely fine. If it's a brand new record, then you would just delete the data before saving the record. If people change companies, does data enrichment update their details automatically? So it won't do it automatically, but if somebody was to change organisation, so if we have a person, so Alan Whitehead's currently employed by Atlantic Computer Services, and actually he then moves and he goes to Blue Circle PLC, and we save that, then our system says, you've changed the employer. Alan Whitehead has never worked for Atlantic Computer Services, so it was set by mistake, or has moved from Atlantic to Blue Circle, which is the case. And then you can actually select which values you keep and which values you get rid of, and then you save that information. What will happen then will be that if there's any information out there on Alan, so if I just put my information in there, for example, on the email address, and then save that, what will happen will be that the Enrich button will come up. You'll click on Enrich, and then simply because of the work that we've done on the architecture and making sure that it is a much more speedy and reliable interface for you. Okay, so that's about all that we've got time for today. Thank you so much for attending. If there are any unanswered questions that you have, please do get in touch with us at success at workbooks.com or do speak to your customer success manager and we will endeavour to help you and get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a great weekend.